Welcome to August Leco Challenge. Today's problem is best time to buy and sell stock 3. Say you have an array for which the ith element is the price of a given stock on day i. Design an algorithm to find the maximum profit. You may complete at most two transactions. You also m may not engage in multiple transactions at the same time. So you have to sell the stock before you can buy again. You can't buy multiple stocks and sell multiple stocks. Great, so let's first think about how we could solve this if we were allowed only one transaction. Because if we were only allowed one transaction, the problem is fairly simple. All we have to do is find the minimum price and sell it at the maximum price, thereby maximizing our profit, right? Uh, and one way we can conceptualize that is to think about the position that we would need to be in in order to maximize our profit. And what I mean by that is when you buy a stock, you're going to be in a negative position, right? Because you've paid however much that stock is. So your net profit at that point is going to be negative. And when you sell it, all you do is add the price of that stock at that point, And that's going to be the amount of profit that you made. So we can just design our algorithm that way. To do that, I would first set my position as negative prices dot zero. Because if we were to have bought a stock, um, and check just to check to see what our maximum amount of profit is, we have to have bought the stock initially, right? So our position would always, um, the very first possible position we could be in is the first price. So to do this, I'll also need to check that, make sure prices list exists. And if it doesn't, we can return zero. So once we've set our position, we could initialize our profit to say zero. And we'll say for I in range of uh, let's say one to the length of prices because we can start at the second day. We already know um, we can't sell anything on the first day, right? The only position and the only position we can be is if we bought that stock on the first day. So uh, first we'll say our, let's first calculate our maximum position that we could possibly be in. So that would either be the max of positive or negative prices I. So say that we didn't buy the price before we're buying it on the second day. If it's lower then we, um, you know, that would be the price. But we want to buy it at the lowest price, right? So since it's negative, um, that's what's going to be why it's the max. And now we want to find calculate our profit. We'll say profit's going to be equal to the max of well, either profit or our position plus the prices I. Because if we sell the stock now, we're going to uh, get that money, whatever it's priced at, at that day. So once we finished here, that should be it. We will return profit. And this would work if it was only for one transaction. So say for this example, one, two, three, four, five, we see that it's not going to matter how many transactions were allowed. The answer will always be four. So here, with allow one transaction, you can see it's equal four. Okay, so we figured that out. But what about if we are allowed two or three or, or whatever? Here we're allowed two, right? So how can we solve that? Well, one way we can think about this is um, as a DP problem. We could start off by creating a DP array to calculate the maximum amount of profit if we were allowed only one day or one transaction. But we need to have some sort of data object to store how much possible profit we can make on every day. And that way, what we can do now is use that maximum profit to calculate uh, if we were to make another transaction, how can we maximize the amount of total profit given before that we only made this one transaction before. And that's a little complicated for me to get really deep into that. It would take a while. So um, I'll, put some, I'll put a link in the description if you wanted to dive deeper into it, but that's the basic idea. We need some sort of um, like historical tracker to track how many, how much money are we making on the previous days. So to do that, we'll create a DP array and we'll say zero for in range of length of prices. And this is just going to be a DP array that contains the maximum profit that we can make per day. And we'll build it up by saying how many transactions were allowed. 
every single day. So we'll start off with one. So what we can do is say for, let's say number of transactions, we'll call it T in range of, we'll start with one and we'll go to two, but we'll need to add one there to make sure we'll go, go through one and two. Okay, so doing that, now we could set, let's set some of our variables here. Set our position to negative prices, that will always be the case. And our profit will always start off at zero. And this will still be the same. The only difference now is when we're calculating our position, we want to calculate the maximum amount that we can make uh, given whatever maximum position that we had before, or I'm sorry, maximum profit that we can make before with one transaction. So what we do here is use our DP array because that on this day, if we were allowed one transaction, this is how much money we made. Now we're going to buy another uh, stock. So now we have to subtract the price from this day uh, from our position, right? And doing that, we can just calcu calculate that position and just add it there. And that would really be doing the same thing. But now we're going to be building upon this DP array. The only thing is we'll have to update our DP array every single time. We'll say DP array I is now equal to the profit that we've calculated, or I should say the maximum profit that we, we've made. Once we've done that, we just return our profit. Uh, we, you can also return the, the last item on, on the DP array, that works too. But given that since the last one's always gonna be the maximum profit on that day, that's what we care about, we can just go ahead and return that. So let me make sure this works. Let's use this example. And this should return six. And it does, let's go ahead and submit that. And there we go. So this is great. This is a very straightforward solution. It looks a lot simpler than it actually is though, because it's very difficult to think about this DP concept of being able to build upon having one transaction and two. Uh, and you can increase this to however many you want. You can have three transactions, four, whatever, and it would still work. Now, one other approach I want to go through because I thought it was pretty brilliant is using state representation. Say that we just don't want to have use use any memory or want to use constant memory. Instead of using a DP array, one way you can think about it is what are the different states that we want to calculate for in in our problem. So we have four states if you think about it, right? You have the initial the state where you buy a stock the very first time. So when you buy a stock, you'll be in a negative position, like I said before. You'll have the second state where you sell that first stock and hopefully you made a profit there. Um, so you'll add the price at that point. The third state would be when you buy your second stock and the fourth state would be when you sell that second stock. So let's say we did that. We see it, okay, let's have three states and we'll start with having the um, uh, negative prices zero as being our initial state. And everything else will have to be just negative infinity for now because we have no idea what our maximum profit could be. So we have four states, right? Now for P and prices, all we would do is calculate these four states and maximize them starting with the beginning. So what we do is say, all right, S1, find the max of um, S1 and the negative price, because it's possible that we have a, we have a, ch a cheaper price, right? After that, we say S2 would be our state where we um, e either be S2 or state where we bought a stock and now we're taking our profit. So that would be S1 plus P. S3, same way, be max of S3, but now it would be S2 minus P. And finally, S4 would be maximum of S4 and S3 plus P, which would be all these are prices. So that would be one pass and we're using very minimal memory here, right? Just basically constant space or one of space. After that, all we do is just return S4 or I should say the max of S4 or zero because it's possible that we can't make a profit 
So in that case, it's better just not to do anything, and zero would be better. So let's make sure this works. Um, nope, it does not. Let's see. What did I do wrong here? Hmm. I'm not sure how that worked. Okay, I think, uh, no. I see. I did a negative float infinity. <laughs> Silly of me. That made it positive, so obviously nothing's going to be that. All right, there we go, six. So let's submit this. And there we go, accepted. And this is actually, in my opinion, the best solution. Um, it's O of n time complexity, and it's O of 1 space. But... The advantage to using the other approach is that you could manipulate the number of transactions you're, you're allowed to have. So it's up to you. I mean, you could still do that using this method, but now if you have like 10 transactions, it's going to require a lot of variables, right? A lot of states. Okay, so there we go. Um, hopefully that helps. Thanks for watching my channel. And remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.